Hi, I'm Américo Cunha. I'm from Rio de Janeiro State University in Brazil, and I present uh, this work uh, related with global sensitivity analysis on a bee stable energy harvester. This work was developed by my student, João Pedro Norenberg, in collaboration with professors Samuel da Silva and Paulo Varuto. To motivate the study, I'm showing here a schematic illustration of the human body with a pacemaker implant inside. A pacemaker, I believe all of you know, it's a medical implant used to correct cardiac arrhythmias. Uh, and the, the, the lifetime of, of, of this device is on average seven years and is limited by the, the capacity of its battery. On the bat well, when the battery uh, uh, life is over, the, 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 the lifetime of the implant is over too. So uh, every seven years on average, uh, uh, a patient which uses a pacemaker needs to pass a new surgery, a very invasive surgery to, to replace this device. So if we could expand the lifetime of this device it would be a, a great enhancement in the quality of life of this kind of patient. Uh, another problem that uh, is very uh, recent and, and important is how can we provide power for the sensors that are used in Internet of Things services? Uh, to give you an idea, the demands of IoT for uh, mobile sensors by 2025 uh, is around 1 trillion, okay? In four years, we're going to have one trillion of sensors operating in our daily lives. How can we provide energy for these sensors? Remember that they are autonomous sensors. They, they work in barcode and so on. So even if we wish to use standard batteries, I believe the world production of batteries is not enough. We need to find another way to provide energy for this kind of devices. A possible answer for these two kinds of problems uh, is given by vibration energy harvesting, uh, which the fundamental idea is to use the energy that uh, usually is lost in vibration. Okay, to, to, we, need, we want to capture part of the energy and, and convert it into electrical energy and use this electrical energy to, to provide energy for our applications. Uh, this concept is simple and powerful. Uh, with uh, vibration energy harvesting, we are able to provide energy for several kinds of applications. You can see here some examples and, and the, the, the power uh, range that we can uh, supply uh, so that we can give solutions here is spans for nine orders of magnitude. So it's a lot. It's a possible solution for the two problems I, I motivated here. But uh, this kind of, of uh, systems, vibratory systems used in energy harvesting, in general, they, they are subjected to a lot of uncertainties and perturbations in their current operation configuration. So this could affect a lot the energy recovery process. What we're interested here in this work is to study in deep how the variability effects on these parameters can affect the, the energy recovery process, okay? And the tool, the mathematical tool that we are going to explore to extract some interesting characteristics of the underlying dynamical systems and identify the, how the, their influence on the energy recovery process is the global sensitivity analysis. We are going to explore these two to identify the most sensitivity parameters in, in a vibration energy harvester. The harvester we are interested in study here is the is classical B stable harvester, uh, which is composed of a rigid base and, and a flexible beam attached to it, a pair of magnets which induce large amplitude movements. And in the top of the beam, you have a transducer, a piezoelectric transducer, which will convert the the vibratory energy into electrical energy here, okay? Uh, here, here we have a resistor here, which will dissipate. The, this is a, a, 
a proof of concept system, okay, but uh, in a real application, this resistor will be replaced by, by a energy converter and a capacitor that will store the energy that will be used to, to, to feed the, the electronic device of our application. The dynamics of the system uh, is governed by a pair of differential equations, one for mechanical dynamics and another one for the electrical one, but they are coupled, okay? Uh, you can see here in the mechanical equation, you have a voltage term, okay? And in the electrical equation, you have a velocity term. So you, ha you have a, a coupling between the electrical and the mechanical domains, which is given by the, we, we, and this complement is governed by a piezoelectric constitutive law uh, that is linear in this case. In some cases, in some operational conditions, this linear um, constitutive law is not able to mimic the correct physics. And sometimes you need to replace it by a nonlinear piezoelectric complement law as we can see here, okay? Any real systems, they are subjected also to another effect, which is a symmetry. It's impossible to construct a perfect symmetric system. So the real harvester is asymmetric, and we can study this effect here, uh, introducing a bias angle here. And uh, this will give rise to uh, an external sinusoidal term in this equation and, and a symmetry term in the in the elastic restitution force, okay? We want to understand here better the effects of this nonlinearity and the asymmetry, especially. And the main quantity we're interested in here is the average power that can be recovered by the, uh, from the system. You can see here an uh, animation of the, the dynamical system, okay? This is the symmetric case with a linear uh, piezoelectric law. You can see that uh, we may have a large amplitude movement because of the presence of the pair of magnets. And now I show you when I introduce the, the nonlinear coupling in, in the piezoelectric constitutive law, you can see that the dynamics are a little bit changed, but uh, you may still have a large amplitude uh, movement, which is good for energy extraction. But when we introduce an asymmetry, the typical effect is to reduce the amplitude of the, the, of the movement. So in principle, the asymmetry will reduce the amount of energy that we can recover, okay? Uh, here you can see time series uh, for several different conditions of uh, excitation amplitude. Uh, you see that uh, you have a plant of possible movements with several different uh, vibration natures and, and amplitudes. And when we introduce the nonlinearity, it changes the, 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 the dynamic response. And, and you can see that the asymmetry, uh, the, the major effect is to reduce the amplitude of the movement for many configurations. How can we, in this very complex system, how can we understand and keep the effect of these, these changes in, in the asymmetry in the nonlinearity? In the, in the system response. The system response we are interested in here is the recovered power. It's very difficult. Uh, so we need a, 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 a special mathematical tool to, to analyze this situation. And the, the mathematical tool we are interested in, we needed to use here is sensitivity analysis, but not classical sensitivity analysis, which is based on derivatives of the output with respect to uh, uh, a certain input. Uh, this is a kind, the, this kind of sensitivity analysis is local. It's only valid for a fixed uh, configuration of parameters. We are interested here in use global sensitivity analysis, which is able to map the sensitivity for a certain range of values, okay? And, and, and to, to use this, we are, we are going to use a, a a certain theorem which is known as hodorf sobol decomposition. Uh, we have a certain quantity of interesting average power here, which is obtained 
by the action of a certain mathematical operator on the model parameters, okay? We represent this relationship by y is equal to m of a vector x. This vector x lamps the, the, the system parameters. How the often the sobol decomposition splits this output, this y, into a sum of several terms, and each term is a conditional average, okay? This is a kind of orthogonal decomposition which is able to split the individual and joint effects of the input parameters on, on the outputs. If I divide the last decomposition by the total variance of the, of the average power, we are able to define the so-called Sobol indices, the first order and the second order Sobol indices. The first order, which is the individual conditional variance of each parameter by the total variance, quantify the additive effect of each input on the power. And the, and the second order indices quantify the joint effect, okay? Uh, as these indices are based on variance, we can use Monte Carlo simulation to obtain them, but this is, computationally costly. So an alternative that is very cheap from the computational point of view is to use a surrogate model based on polynomial chaos expansion to, to do this. And with this, uh, by using the coefficients of this expansion, we are able to compute those indices analytically. And this is the, the procedure we do here, okay? In, in a nutshell, the framework is this. We have some, we are interested in quantify the effect of the disturbances in, in geometry, material properties, external excitations on the recovered power. We randomize this. We put some value in, uh, ranges of parameters where these parameters vary. We use Sobol indices, okay, computed with a surrogate model to give rise to a map of indices that will quantify the sensitivity. So you can see here the sensitivity of the mean power for the symmetric case with a linear piezoelectric constitutive relation. We can see it's very clear the, the most uh, 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 effective parameter here is the excitation frequency and, and the piezoelectric coupling coefficient, okay? You see several uh, amplitude of uh, excitations here, but when we introduce a small level of nonlinearity in the constitutive law, we see that a little bit, this change a little bit. And as we increase the, the, the level of nonlinearity, what we can see is that the influence, the individual influence of the excitation frequency reduce and its joint effect combined with the piezoelectric parameters increases, okay? Are those gray bars here. And what happens when we introduce the, the asymmetry, okay? We are going to consider uh, asymmetry here by these bio angles, which will take values between minus 50 degrees up to 15 degrees, okay? Uh, we see that the, the, the map of sensitivity completely changes, okay? And the, the main uh, effect which dominates here is the joint contribution between the, the excitation frequency and the asymmetric uh, angle. Uh, this behavior is very complex, but we can synthesize the, 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 the sensitivity in, in this table here, okay? Some parameters uh, like damping, like uh, the, the asymmetry coefficient in the restoring force uh, has almost no contribution to the, uh, the output power. But uh, some parameters like the, the characteristic time of the electric circuit, the, the, the piezoelectric coefficient in the electric equation, the excitation amplitude, the excitation frequency, and the nonlinearity level, they have a significant contributions as well as the bias angles. When the sensitivity uh, could be optimal to improve the efficiency of the system, okay? Uh, for lambda and kappa, in high energy domain, when, when you have a high amplitude orbits uh, in, in the dynamics, this is the, they, are the, they are good parameters to improve the efficiency of the system. The excitation amplitude uh, uh, is good in low and middle level energy domain, uh, the excitation frequency in all the spectrum, the level of uh, nonlinearity for high values of energy, 
and, and the bias angle for low and middle energy domains, okay? So to conclude, uh, we noted that the, the importance of how the parameters affect the, the recovered power changes a lot with the vibration regime. In regular dynamics is one pattern, in, in chaotic dynamics is another one. But uh, for, for our numerical studies, the, the most pronounced parameters were the frequency and amplitude of excitation, the asymmetric bias angle, and the piezoelectric couplet uh, coefficient in the electrical equation. Uh, we noted also that the bias angle is better to optimize the, the harvested power in middle and low forcing amplitudes, and, and while the piezoelectric coefficient is good for high forcing amplitudes, okay? Uh, we continue this work studying quantification uh, of uncertainties for the parameter disturbance. This is ongoing research. Uh, I wish to acknowledge the su institutional support of WERJ, UNESP, and USP for this research and the financial support of these Brazilian founding agencies. Uh, I acknowledge your, your attention. Uh, if you're interested in this work, you, you can see the, the, this paper here. Okay, you can download the picking with this QR code. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be ha happy to answer. Thank you. <laughs>